Here at the Oakland Zoo, you can meet fascinating animals from all around the world. But one of the most special animal residents is one that historically was found right in their own backyard. The American bison, also referred to as the buffalo, was once found all over North America, and their numbers were estimated to be over 30 million. Now with only around 1% of their historic population living on the continent, the herd thriving at Oakland Zoo is playing a special role in the survival of their species. So our bison here at Oakland Zoo have around 13 acres, and it gives them this big grazing opportunity that they would do in the wild. So they would be moving and grazing on pasture land, um, wild pasture land, grasslands in the wild. And so we wanted to give them as much of that space and opportunity as possible. The reason why we have bison here at the Oakland Zoo is we are part of a program with the Blackfeet Nation to help diversify their genetic population of their wild heritage herd. So the cows came in, um, we brought them in to raise their calves, and then their calves go back out to the Blackfeet Nation in Montana in order to bring in that genetic diversity. I think it's amazing that we have an opportunity to have a direct impact of the wild population. To be able to take an animal that is historically native to this region, make that connection with our visitors that come through the gate, and have a direct impact on their conservation back out into the wild, you, you can't beat that. That's why we're all here. Recently named our national mammal, the bison doesn't just lend to the story of a healthy ecosystem here in North America, it's also a major character in the history of many native tribes from all over the continent. In fact, the local Ohlone tribe who resides in the Bay Area came to the zoo to give a blessing to the bison herd as they prepare for their long journey home. It's over 1,200 miles to the land of the Blackfeet Nation in Browning, Montana, but soon they will have the opportunity to return to the place where their ancestors once roamed freely. We're here in Browning to really uh, celebrate the Eni Initiative, which is an attempt to bring the bison back to the American West. Our goal is, to, and our vision really, is to see a free-ranging herd, much like you have in Yellowstone National Park, only this time it would be on the Blackfeet Reservation and in Glacier National Park on the U.S. side, but as part of an international herd that also crosses into Waterton National Park in Canada. Now to you or me, this may just look like a beautiful expanse of ranch land, but to the Blackfeet Nation, this is sacred land. And it was the perfect place for them to hold their first annual Inni Days. This four-day event is a celebration designed to engage with the entire community, bringing more awareness to the plight of the bison and the Inni Initiative, as well as connecting people from all backgrounds to the stories and traditions of the Blackfeet Nation. It's a great collaboration for us. It is connecting the uh, people from Northern California to the Blackfeet Nation, and then also with the, uh, the national parks that are up here. I think what zoos can do that are special is that we can do breeding programs, and we can do education programs that reach a lot of people. And that's our primary role. And it's not just the Oakland Zoo that's focused on the educational aspects of the bison's return. I am the Blackfeet coordinator for the Blackfeet First Food Youth Camps. So this summer I'm coordinating some youth camps to teach the youth about traditional foods and traditional medicines. I feel like it's really important that we go back in the timeline of history to learn what happened to our people and what happened to our tribe and our ancestors and our own family in order for us to live an honorable life for them and for our future generations. The old ladies, they used to sit on the hills and they would watch the buffalo. And what the buffalo ate, they knew was safe to eat. What the buffalo disregarded was a plant that wasn't safe. So they learned and they followed and that was our food source of why we migrated. The buffalo really intertwines with the work that I'm doing because our traditional foods were identified with the help of the buffalo. Well, the ENA Days is an accumulation of a number of years of work by dedicated people through, I think, a, a course of almost 20 years now. And the, the history itself is not unique, but it's unique in these times because it's 
describing our identity as it relates to our source of life, which we call the Iini Patapioks, and the Buffalo way of life. The only animal in our stories, and I, I regret to use the name animal, they are beings. They were given to our people. It also serves as our economy. In this case, the economy of the Americas was on the backs of the buffalo, the Iini. It gave us order, it gave us law, it gave us identity, plus it gave us the environment that we exist in today. When I was a little girl and my father and mother didn't see a buffalo because they were just about wiped out. They're coming back, they're survivors, and so are we. You know, we're survivors because of them. My granddaughter's growing up, she's only seven months old, she's gonna grow up with them. It's significant because, again, with the Oakland Zoo and our involvement from the original inception, we see the vision in our prayers and we hear and we feel it today.